Hello students. Today we'll talk about the Prague School. In fact, this is uh, not a school where students study. This is a school of thought, a mindset. Some people, some scholars who have the same mindset to analyze the text or they have uh, almost similar ideas about language. So that uh, group, that linguistic and literary group is called the Prague School. So first of all, we'll see what is Prague. As you look at the picture in the corner, this is the real picture of Prague. Prague is the capital and the largest city in the Czech Republic. Czech Republic is a poor country in Europe. It's the 13th largest city in European Union and it's the historical capital of Bohemia. Bohemia is also significant in Shakespearean literature. Shakespeare wrote a tragic comedy, The Winter's Tale. In Winter's Tale, we find a king who comes from Bohemia and in this way the plot uh, progresses. So Prague has uh, literary significance, Prague has uh, linguistic significance, Prague uh, has uh, given birth a school of thought which has a particular way of analysis of language and uh, linguistics. The Prague School or Prague Linguistic Circle was an influential group of linguists, philologists and literary critics in Prague. Here three domains have been gathered. Pure language experts are linguists and literary critics from literature side and philologists who study ancient languages. So this is the very good combination of uh, scholars uh, ranging from different domains of knowledge. Its proponents developed methods of structuralist literary analysis and a theory of the standard language and of language cultivation during the years 1929 to 1939. They have uh, proposed that how can we standardize a language and uh, basically when one language is spoken it has several varieties or rather numerous varieties and uh, dialects so how can we standardize one language how one dialect is superior to the other dialect there are several dialects in english language but uh, london english is called uh, received uh, pronunciation rp and standard language. Usually language of the capital is called the standard language because that is the hub of scholars, uh, government uh, policy makers and uh, there are other uh, uh, powerful institutions uh, functioning over there. For example courts, uh, royal courts uh, and uh, uh, printing press and other administrative powers are residing in the capital. So language of capital or the dialect of the capital is called the standard language. Prague Linguistic Circles, the Prague School or Prague Linguistic Circle is a language and literature society. It started in 1926 as a group of linguists, philologists, and literary critics. In Prague, as I have mentioned that philologists, linguists and literary critics uh, gathered in Prague. Its proponents developed method of structuralist theory analysis and a theory of the standard language. It started from the Cafe Derby in those days. People used to sit in the cafes and they shared their ideas and they talked uh, about them. In the same way, in Pakistan, literature developed in different chai khana, uh, tea houses in Lahore.
language and its uh, changes can be studied synchronically or diachronically. What is synchronic? Synchronic means study of language for a specific period of time is called synchronic or for a specific event that is called synchronic. Nowadays there are COVID-19 days. If you want to find out language change or excessive use of language uh, or excessive use of some terms in a language so that particular uh, event and particular time study is called synchronic study like uh, the word quarantine was not common in our language and almost uh, most of us were not knowing about it now everybody knows this word isolation social distancing these words have become so common in our language so this is called synchronic diachronic diachronic look at dia word starts with d period ends with d so diachronic and period words have to be for example if you take uh, 10 years time span almost uh, 1994 5 computers were introduced in pakistan if you take uh, 10 years or 20 years time before advent of computer and after the advent of computer has our language changed or not yes obviously our language has changed tremendously our urdu has also borrowed many english words uh, like whatsapp email ebook pdf and uh, microsoft soft copy word file and so many other words we have borrowed um, uh, under the influence of internet so internet changed our language if we take 20 years or 10 years this per uh, period of time and its uh, uh, changes are called diachronic study again to summarize synchronic for specific time it's very short diachronic is long one and it covers a period of time study of language through relationship with existing elements language is studied as with the comparison of existing relationship and existing elements because existing elements are alive and uh, other elements are not so much uh, functional in the society so language is compared with existing elements even dead languages are compared and studied on the foundation of existing elements language is a tool for performing various functions in a society language is a very powerful tool to communicate people communicate people uh, there are requests there are orders there are threats there are uh, persuading tactics there is diplomatic language every profession has a language and uh, even when you buy any product you find a booklet along with that product that booklet has been written in various languages so that uh, people from different areas can understand about that product advertisement or advertising is also uh, a major factor uh, in uh, communication so language performs so many functions in a society now uh, we'll study three functions of a language Karl Buhler whose picture has been given in the right corner he has presented uh, three basic functions of a language he says one is a cognitive function cognition and cognitive it means related with brain neuron mental faculties or mental abilities it is related with the transfer of factual information 
we transfer factual information uh, from our readings to the people we communicate and we talk about factual information so language serves a cognitive function means sharing of a uh, truth conditioned information second function of language is it has expressive function it expresses the moods and attitudes of uh, the writer of the speaker when we read any tragedy we find some sad uh, feelings emotions moods and attitudes when we study some comedy we find a comic or a pleasant mood and attitude so our writings express a comic or tragic or some uh, writers like uh, shakespeare he has mentioned uh, tragic comedy in his uh, play a winter's tale language also performs another function that is called cognitive function cognitive function means how does it influence the addresser the mental faculty of purpose desire or will to perform an action so cognitive functions addresses or influences the speaker or the writer we find out the mental conditions of the speaker and the writer or the desire or the narrative of any piece of writing or the desire to uh, convince someone suppose when we read imperialism by edward said we find his uh, way of uh, expressing that how western powers have uh, exploited us and how has they uh, deprived us from our identity culture values and we have to see through their eyes we consider that our culture is inferior and western culture and colonizers culture is superior so we have left our own identity and we have started to feel that our colonizers are superior and we are inferior and edward said uh, condemns uh, such thoughts and feelings there are different contributions of prague school it saw language in terms of function it does not take language as a piece of grammar it uh, wants to see that uh, which functions can be performed by language how does language play its role in the society they analyzed language with a view of showing the functions played by the different components when we speak or write different components play their vital role in communication of its meaning suppose when a person is speaking a person's voice low pitch or uh, high pitch falling intonation pattern or rising intonation pattern or uh, politeness or impoliteness so all these things play their role in the communication if we are writing if there is a written work we can see whether the writer has used uh, euphemized language or uh, respectful language or is it tragic language or uh, comic language suppose you read uh, stephen leacock stephen leacock the man who was a hospital or uh, you will find that he make fun of himself and uh, he has used uh, comic language uh, when a physician examines him and writes a prescription for him that you should not fill those ideas in your brain which you cannot comprehend they looked in languages and explanations to why languages were the way they were they wanted to explore the reasons that why languages are different 
why they have such type of uh, conditions suppose there is a hopi language of uh, uh, tribes in america over there there is no difference between noun and verb in some languages we have different words like in urdu we say uh, sabz dhaniya green coriander while uh, hindu speakers those who live in mari and this region they say neela dhaniya and uh, they have given a different color name to the same thing so languages have uh, different uh, functions like arabic has single dual plural in numbers while uh, english modern english has singular and plural so there are different uh, things in different languages why are they so and how are they so so these uh, uh, proponents of frog school they studied these differences they also use the terms theme and ream theme you can, in the easiest way you can say theme is the starting point of a sentence or theme is a subject and ream is an object or ream is the uh, destination of a sentence so theme is subject ream is object theme is starting point of sentence and ream is the ending point of the sentence it was interested in standardizing linguistic usages as i have talked earlier that every language has numerous uh, dialects and varieties so there is need to standardize uh, linguistic usage that which uh, usage is appropriate or which is uh, which usage is not appropriate so standardization of language is a big task uh, when they standardize language they also support uh, standardization with the lexicography and with the dictionaries so this frog school try to standardize linguistic usages the frog school has had a significant continuing influence on linguistics and semiotics semiotics means study of signs what is signs all logo all monograms nama logo and uh, all products have uh, their own monograms or logos and uh, every word is also a sign so signs are pictures words or uh, logos monograms different shapes after the czechoslovak khu data of 1948 khu data means that army has controlled the government and uh, democratic government has finished the circle was disbanded in 1952 when military got power this frog school was disbanded they shifted to different areas for in search of uh, peace but the frog school continued their thoughts their work their publications were continued as a major force in linguistic functionalism the prague structuralist also had a significant influence on structuralist film theory especially through the introduction of the ostensive sign ostensive sign means to explain things with examples gestures and body language today the prague linguistic circle aims to contribute to the knowledge of language and related sign system as i have talked to you earlier about uh, semiotics according to functionally structural principles to this end it organizes regular meetings with lectures and debates publishes professional publications and organizes international meetings okay prague school is still functional and uh, its influence is uh, wide ranging and uh, though they 
left Prague, but they continued their work, literary work and linguistic works. So now we'll discuss some personalities, some notable figures who worked in uh, this uh, Prague school and how have they contributed. So we'll take a few uh, notable figures. Wilhelm Mathesius 1882 to 1945. He was a Czech angelist who studied and taught at the Karolin University of Prague. In 1911, Mathesius published his first call for a new non-historic approach to language study. So he is the founder. He invited other scholars to come and to discuss and uh, publish notable work in the domain of linguistics, uh, philology and uh, literary studies. Prince Nikolai Sergevich to Betsuke, Prince Nikolai Sergevich to Betsukoy was one of the members of the Prague school, not based in Czechoslovakia. He worked on phonology. Phonology means study of sounds. And he says it's uh, very important in the study of phonemes. Phoneme is the smallest unit of sound. He was a student of Indo-European linguistics. As I have taught you earlier, Indo-European uh, language family that Indian language, especially Sanskrit, and uh, European languages like English and some others. So they are under the influence of uh, Sanskrit or uh, Indian language. That's why we find several uh, Sanskrit words in English language. In the principles, principles is a book written by Prince Nikolai establishes a rather sophisticated system of phonological typology, a system which enables us to say what kind of phonology a language has. He introduced a system of phonology and he analyzed different languages and he said that uh, what kind of system is present in, in other languages of the world or and especially in Indo-European languages. Roman Jacobson was also the key figure of Prague school. Roman Jacobson was a Russian scholar. From the 1920s onwards, he studied and taught in Prague and moved to a chair in the University of Brno. Jacobson's intellectual interests are broad. He has worked on different fields and reflect those of the Prague school as a whole. He has written a great deal, for instance, on the structuralist approach to lit literature. The most important aspect of Jacobson's work is his phonological theory. So he has uh, two main works. One is his uh, work is a guideline for literary critics. Secondly, his work is equally useful for the students and learners of phonology because he propounded phonological theory. He was a well-read person and he worked in different domains of literature, linguistics and philology. The articulatory phonetics lesson is that human vocal anatomy provides a very large range of different phonetic parameters. Point is, human vocal cords and human articulatory system is capable to produce uh, different types of uh, sounds. At Jacobson's view, only a small group of phonetic parameters seem to play a linguistically distinctive role. Human beings are capable to produce so many sounds, but humans could recognize and they could work only a 
few sounds and they could uh, find out the features and their roles. Jacobson published a book and he described the 12 distinctive features called preliminaries to speech analysis. This is his also another contribution in phonology that he presented 12 distinctive features. Thank you so much for your time. Good luck.